Well, hello, lovelies. As you can see, I'm pretty excited. And that's because International Waffle Day is coming up. And today I'm sharing five incredible ways to celebrate. That's right. I'm not only making classic waffles, but then I'm gonna show you how to make five awesome dessert inspired waffles that are going to just blow your mind. So for all of these tasty waffle ideas, we are going to be using the same base recipe and it's really easy to put together. We are starting with some flour, as you do. Then we are going to add just a little bit of sugar. If you want a sweeter waffle, you could definitely add a few more tablespoons, but I like letting the mix-ins and the toppings do most of the work. Next, I am going to add some baking soda and some baking powder. This is how you end up with nice, fluffy waffles and what is not to like about that. I'll whisk all of that together and then set it aside and get to work on my wet ingredients. So for these waffles, I am going to be using some buttermilk, but you could definitely use regular milk if that's what you had on hand. I'm also going to add one egg to this. I've got a few tablespoons of melted butter. Come on, show me something that is not made better by melted butter, seriously. And a splash of vanilla extract. We're going to give it a good whisk until that egg is nicely beaten. And then, of course, it is time to marry these two things. I'll mix all of that together just until it's combined, and then it is time to start making some waffles. So of course, to make waffles, you need a handy dandy waffle iron. I found mine fairly inexpensively on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description box below. As you can see, it is non-stick, so you don't even need to add any additional oil, which is terrific. As per the instructions, it is really important not to overfill your waffle iron, so mine calls for a half a cup of batter, so that's what I'm gonna use. And on goes the lid. What is awesome about your waffle iron is that it will tell you when it is done. When this little light is green, it means you are in action. <gasps> Look at all of that waffle happiness. Yes. This is winning at breakfast, let me tell you. Now, of course, for the classics, you can always serve them with some butter and some maple syrup. But I would hold on to your hats, folks, because we are about to take this right over the top. I hope you have your stretchy pants on. Things are about to get delicious. Starting with some carrot cake inspired waffles. So for this recipe, we are starting with the very same base, and then we are just going to build in some additional flavor. So I'm gonna start by mixing up my dry ingredients. I've got my flour, my sugar, baking powder, and baking soda. And then, because it's carrot cake flavor, we are going to add in some much needed spice. We're going to be adding some ground ginger. We're also going to be adding some ground cinnamon. I'll whisk that together, and then for my wet ingredients, I'm using the very same thing. So buttermilk, an egg, melted butter, and some vanilla extract. Mmm, I can smell the cinnamony and gingery goodness already. Now, of course, it wouldn't be carrot cake anything without some carrots, so I've got one large carrot that I have finely shredded. I'm just going to fold that in with some crushed pecans. Give this all a stir, and let's get this waffle iron fired up. Now, of course, you have the option to serve them with maple syrup, that is fine but I actually recommend serving them instead with some maple flavored cream cheese icing. You can of course use store-bought if you want to, or you can make your own. I have linked a recipe in the description box below. You're welcome. Come on guys, there's carrots in there. It's almost like eating a salad. Next, for all you chocolate lovers out there, we are making a triple chocolate waffle sundae. That's the thing that's happening. So this all starts again with the same base ingredients. I'm mixing up my flour, a little sugar, some baking soda and some baking powder. We are also going to be mixing in some cocoa powder here. Let's get this mixed up and mixed in. Now that our dry ingredients are mixed, we will switch it up with our wet ingredients. Give this all a good mix together and then fold in some chocolate chips. Now I always recommend using mini chocolate chips in a recipe like this because you basically get more chocolate chip per square inch. It's physics, people. Well, once you've got your waffles made, you can go ahead and assemble your sundaes. 
In this case, I'm starting with two beautiful double chocolate waffles on the bottom. Then I am going to pile on some vanilla ice cream, some chocolate sauce, and top it all off with a cherry. There is a waffle lot of goodness happening on that plate. Our next tasty offering is inspired by all the deliciousness that is a churro. If you're not familiar with churro, it is so good. Deep fried dough basically rolled in cinnamon sugar. So we are actually going to do that waffle style today. We're going to be using the same base recipe once again. We'll just mix up our dry ingredients and then our wet ingredients and combine them together. Now what makes a churro a churro, of course, is cinnamon sugar, which is just as easy as combining some sugar and some cinnamon. I've got a nice big bowl I'm doing this in because what I'm gonna do as my waffles come off, I'm going to brush them with some melted butter and then toss them right into this tasty mixture here. And to help these churro waffles reach their full potential, we are going to serve them with some caramel sauce. Yeah, I did. Next up in our waffle extravaganza, we are making banana bread inspired waffles. I can think of few things that give me as much joy as banana bread. True story. So of course, these start with the very same dry ingredients, but I'm also going to add just a little sprinkle of cinnamon because I do love some cinnamon in my banana bread. Once my dry ingredients have been mixed up, I will turn my attention to my wet ingredients, but this time I'm actually going to start with a very ripe banana. I'm just going to use a fork to mash it up until it's nice and soft. Of course, the more ripe your banana is, the more delicious your banana bread waffles will be, so use a nice ripe banana if you can. We'll add the very same remaining wet ingredients, give this all a good mix together, and then fold in some crushed walnuts. The walnuts are totally optional here, but I really think that little bit of crunch goes a long way to making these absolutely perfect. I like serving them with some maple syrup, a whole heaping helping of whipped cream, and more crushed walnuts on top for good measure. Cause you know, excess is a thing I like to do from time to time. Finally, if you're really in the mood to celebrate, might I suggest doing it with some birthday cake flavored waffles. We're going to be using the same base recipe once again, but I'm going to add one additional dry ingredient here, and that is some vanilla flavored protein powder. You also have the option to use some powdered cake mix here, or you could use some vanilla flavored pudding. The idea is to really amp up that vanilla flavor so it starts to taste like cake. I'm just going to mix up my wet ingredients as I did before and then combine the two. Once my waffles have been made though, that's where the real magic happens. I like to finish them off with some vanilla flavored ice cream, some whipped cream, and a whole lot of rainbow sprinkles. I seriously am telling you, these waffles will make you wish today was your birthday. I really hope you will give all of these ideas a try, but not all at once. That would be too much. <laughs> if you do, be sure to tweet me, Instagram me, or Snapchat me a photo because nothing would make me happier than seeing your waffle creations. The full recipes are available in the description box below. As always, you can take a look for them there. And finally, if you have not already, be sure to subscribe because there is lots more deliciousness, slightly healthier, a little less decadent, where this came from.